Raise your hand if you're on the bus! <laughs> So, Suze, how's it going? Actually, this is pretty good. We're here in the Perlis. Um, we just realized that we're going to turn this closet into a music studio. I love it. Um, oh, be careful, guys. What about you, Sis? Um, I accidentally wrote the wrong address um, for our Lyft driver, and he took us to Brooklyn <laughs> instead of Manhattan. So, East 55th Street, Manhattan. <laughs> and so we were 30 minutes even further the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who was I in think the we need to me. catch this moment. Oh, yeah, we should catch it. <laughs> special time to be here, to be in this very magical place and a place that has been so supportive of us and so, so supportive of us and the, you know, um, community of artists that are family in the tap dance community and just to us as, as individual artists. It's really special. What's up, y'all? Hey. Hey. Coming into this residency, it was really important to me to provide opportunities for people to dance together in a space safely. As many tap dancers as humanly possible and musicians. And to give voices that I love and, and am inspired by opportunity to create. What does this opportunity mean to me as an artist and dancer during this time? I feel an overwhelming sense of gratitude. I would say that this opportunity has just given me so much hope for what we can do as a company, what I can do as a dancer, as an artist. This opportunity is so rare in the scope of what we're looking at, you know, like people are losing their jobs and people are losing their homes. People are hungry, um, people are sick, people are dying. There's so much loss and so much tragedy that's happening right now. Having a safe space to come to, to create art, to change our minds, to change our spirits. So you can't really put it into words, you can't quantify what this does. I feel a huge debt of gratitude to all of my co-workers, castmates, whatever you want to call them, because it took all of us adhering to every rule and every guideline to ensure everyone's health, safety, wellness, etc. Talk about it. Uh, well, I am. I am pooped. I've only been dancing for like an hour. <laughs> First time in my career that I feel like I'm just I'm just out of shape. Like, but hey, that's that's why we're here. The first few days, you know, it was like pretty intense, and then I would say that it maybe just cooled off a little after those first few days. All of our bodies were sort of, dare I say, falling apart. It's hard to do something the way you used to after like what we've been through in the past few months. It's hard just to jump back in and act like your body is the same, that we're coming in from a, a different state of, state of mind, you know, we have different memories, we have things that have changed us this year. As tap dancers, we have this challenge to communicate not only with dancers, but musicians and even non-artists, non-dancers, and non-musicians. As I've been, I guess, charged with the task to engage in dialogue with these strong, strong solos, we've been trying to find ways and exercises to build up each soloist's voice.
Joseph Lynn and Josette's uh, brother, uh, who's also my brother, because we grew up together too, at the Universal Dance Design um, that, was, that was ran by a brother and sister called Paul and Arlene Kennedy. And Joseph has been kind of given the guys the Kennedy treatment. That's what I can only kind of say. Uh, using your arms, um, making um, your sounds clean and crystal clear so everyone can understand it, they can hear it, they can vibe to it, they can move to it. And also he's been challenging us as a dancer in different time signatures as well. And um, just, just pushing us. Let's try a whole, a whole jam. So let's do no accent four times. Then we do the rundown accent. For me, I'm still struggling getting out of the like pandemic funk, you know? I find it really hard getting out of like the political funk. I keep, I, I'm having a hard time finding my joy again. And I think that's something I'll probably try to also address choreographically. Yeah, maybe. We got you, we got you. We got you. One. Wait, I do have a question. <laughs> well, conceptually, some of the ideas I've been playing around with have to do with chaos and order, things falling apart. Obviously, this is very inspired by what's been happening globally. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find artistic ways to express that that aren't, I want to say trite, but more that aren't really, really obvious, you know? And I think probably even dealing with these ideas of order falling apart probably are very obvious, but uh, one of the ways I thought it might be interesting to do it is um, with polyrhythms, uh, which is something I'd love to do and work with, and having those visually uh, separate and uh, move in lots of directions with the dancers. Outside of that, uh, I also wanted to play with the ideas of isolation, because it's something that we're doing all the time, and we're um, or something that's been forced upon us, I should say, um, in lots of different measures and lots of different ways. A lot of the people I talk to, um, a lot of other artists seem to be having the same thing. We have all this time, but we don't have the inspiration. I think that's something that happens in, in isolation is um, you start to really realize where your inspirations are coming from and you start to realize how many of them come from other people and, and other artists. at Wigan on some of the hardest, most authentic vernacular jazz movement that is out there. I've been working on trying to give the company a strong foundation in solo jazz movement, which is part of um, the umbrella. It's under the umbrella of vernacular jazz. So you have tap, which is a part of that, Lindy Hop, Black Bottom, Charleston, and solo jazz. Different than the ballet world, I feel like a lot of times once you become like a professional tap dancer, you don't always do technique classes anymore. You should, and you always try to get us to work on that, but it, it's a struggle. I feel like oftentimes you're like, oh, I'm working professionally, like I'm not gonna go and go back to the basics. So for Josette to take us and really teach us and to have a technique class and go back to the basics of something, feels incredible as a dancer. The way that I teach in anything, whether I teach solo jazz or whether I teach tap, I always think of the standard. And for tap, the standard were um, all of the greats that we all know and love and all of the old footage that we watched. But for Lindy Hop, these greats are not as well known. And so one day, uh, we hooked up my computer to the big TV and I went through some of these names. 
footage to kind of give us a marker so that my body and my interpretation of these legends will not be the standard, but the legends themselves. And in trying to reach this standard, it kind of gave the company just the motivation to understand that this will be a lifetime journey and that um, being able to embody the music. It's not just about dancing to the music, but it's about embodying it and allowing like, every facet of your body to feel it at all times. I feel like such an uh, amazing sense of family here. Uh, not only just artistically in that we're vibing and we like riff off each other's ideas, you know, but also outside, just in our living quarters. That sense of joy and like you said, the sense of play mm -hmm. that's kind of vibrates between everybody here is really uh, is powerful and very, very unique. I love you. We decided to set up a party for you. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Inside of what we create in the studio is also the exchanges of energy that we have outside of it. And this is why this community of people, I would say the tap dance community, period, because we're all very close, even if you know the community is wrought with all kinds of history. Um, but I think it's just really special to be able to spend time in a way that has no parameters on it. Also being able to let loose and be creative because often we are our most creative when we are at play. So whether it's Joseph Wigan doing abstract soloing on the guitar to Nicholas doing a modular set to us clapping, pocketing ridiculous 64th note claps or um, a popping lesson happening in the kitchen you know i think that that we're we're at our most creative when we are spontaneous when we are there's nothing contrived and there's nothing we're seeking to achieve and i feel like that energy is really important for everyone here to have I wanted to honor the fact that every single individual artist here, from an Elizabeth Burke, who I have known since she was five years old and has, is a founding member of this company, to Jabu Graybill, who it, this is the first time he's ever been in a residency with us. Um, I want, there's such a drastic difference in everyone's perspective. Nicholas is a father, Carson is a mother, Imogen is here. Um, you know, Chris was injured moving into the pandemic. There's just so there's just so many different experiences and, and a lot of people have had very different experiences of this time. I wanted to just leave room for that and not push. We have to choose to push ourselves inside of this space and inside of this time and that was really important to me. didn't want to be someone shaping and molding something in a time where I think this time is asking of us to be open-minded and to observe and to reflect. 
Um, so I'm, I'm also tremendously grateful to folk dancers and musicians for wanting to create right now. And I think it's tough. It's a, it's a really strange journey to, to create right now. You know, what is our job? What is our responsibility in the world? Um, other than to, you know, communicate and make something genuine and to share it as vulnerably as possible and to help make change, to help make the change that we want to see, to help shift perspective, to help change the vibration. So what is really our job? And we have to remember that our responsibility is to part of the why we live and what moves us and, you know, what we live for. Brother, I love you. Also, you always had the freshest socks, so just saying. I appreciate it. I love you. at our feet so much and you gotta look at you some colors every day. You know what? I hear you, brother. <laughs> I love you so much. This is one of the things I learned at Dorian's dance. Hey. <laughs> look at this. Are you getting old? <laughs>